The Tesca Mixcast 4 by today is a device that fills the gap between the Roadcaster Pro 1 and 2 and this is to a large extent because during the last year Tascam has released 5 firmware updates to the Mixcast 4, version 1.3.0 being the latest in July 2022. There are 10 new features in these firmwares which, after you have updated the console, make the Mixcast 4 a very mature product, so let's see about them. And while the Mixcast 4 was a little bit late to the game when it was released in August 2021, but in many ways it was already a better podcast recording console than the Roadcaster Pro 1 when it was launched. But at that time, you really had to look closely. And thanks to the following updates, this is not the case anymore. <laughs> I have arranged this video, kind of Tarantino-esque. No bloodbath or swearing, yet we'll still have 10 non-linear chapters. Let's start off with the home screen, where the level meters were nice and readable, but we had no idea about the exact level or at which level they changed their color. Now you know that the levels change colors above minus 12 dB. You can enable this on the hardware settings screen under advanced settings. Staying on the home screen, it was quite a pain on the Mixcast 4 that you had to tap the screen three times to get to a certain channel settings from the home screen for a relatively common need to adjust the gain level. A clear UI flow, in my opinion. And while Tascam could not magically make the channel indicators capacitive so that you can tap on them and land on the channel settings, what they did instead is that now a shortcut function has been added on the home screen that jumps to the channel settings screens by tapping channel numbers below the level meters and boom, with a single tap instead of three, you can reach the screen to adjust channel gain, voice processing and the effects. Oh yeah, effects. It was a nice touch in the original firmware that you could apply voice effects to a channel and you could even assign this effect to be triggered by a sound pad which is by the way partly why Rode calls these pads on the Rodecaster Pro 2 smart pads, with the slight caveat that you could only assign a single voice effect to a single channel. Now Tascam has taken a half step forward, they have added a common mode to the voice effector that enables a single effect to be shared by multiple mic channels. You still have the option to apply the effect to a single channel, that's what this new channel button is for, but you also get a common button which is where it gets interesting. It right away warns you that the effects will only be recorded on the stereo mix, not on the individual channel tracks. Just something to keep in mind. But moreover, what it allows is that you can turn on the effect for multiple mic channels at the same time. Whereas in the original firmware, if you turn it on for a channel, you got a warning that it only works on one channel. And indeed, if you turn the effect on for another channel, it was then turned off for the previous channel. Not anymore. I said it's a half step forward as you still cannot alter the effect for each channel individually. When the respective sound pad is pressed, the very same effect is applied to all the channels that you've turned on the effects for. On the home screen you get a little icon that A tells you if you are in common mode or not, and B if you are, you can tap on these icons to turn the effect on or off for the specific channels. In a future update, it would also be nice to see if you could apply different effects to different channels or even stack the effects on each other, which you can happily do in the Roadcaster Pro 2, by the way. If you wanted to trigger said voice effect with the soundpad, so far you had to keep the soundpad pressed. But now a new latch play method setting has been added to the effect on the pad advanced page, where you can set up the effect pad in the first place. If you now set it to latch, which you could not do previously, then the effect will be applied continuously, so you don't have to keep the sound pad pressed, which is nice if you wanted the guest's voice to be masked for the entire show. Talking about adjusting how you hear guests, a nice feature of the Mixcast 4 was ducking, so when the host of the show on the microphone 1 channel was talking, the volume of all other channels was dropped to prioritize what the host had to say. Well, all other channels but the sound pads, which was, well, incomprehensible to me. You had to manually lower the volume if you wanted the host to be heard over the background music. Now it's been connected with a new setting that has been added to enable the ducking effect to be also used with the pad playback sounds. Meanwhile, ducking will be disabled in talkback mode if mic 1 is muted or if the fader is fully down to zero level, which is very thoughtful. Talking about levels, 
they were not adjustable, at least not in terms of gain, for the USB smartphone line in and Bluetooth inputs. Whereas now, when jumping to the channel settings of these digital inputs, using the new shortcut buttons on the home screen, you'll have access to gain adjustments to achieve suitable volume levels on these channels as well. All we need now is to correct this weird way of scaling the gain 0 to 50, while the gain range is 66.5 decibels, please put the scale from 0 to 66.5, and then we know exactly how much gain we've added and won't need a calculator to find it out. Also, the feedback prevention function has been changed. It used to mute the mics when the monitor speakers were active, whereas now they have reversed it to automatically mute the monitor speakers while a mic input is active. You have a mute indicator on the screen as soon as you have your mic faders moved up and it will disappear if you mute your mic or fully down the fader. Many have requested this and I understand why it is a comfortable setting plus how it works the same way as on the Rodecaster Pros, but I'm not entirely happy with this as I for one like the previous way of feedback prevention more. Now you can't really use it for voice conferencing with monitor speakers as if your mic fader is up the speakers will be muted so you won't hear the other side talking. So to me, it's one step backward, even if the previous way of feedback prevention was not always working perfectly. Still, it would be great if we had the choice. The very useful TalkBack function was also not spared from further treatment. TalkBack in the original firmware was a function that allowed for the host on microphone one to press a hardware button and talk to the people present and having a headphone connected without being recorded. Now on the new Rodecaster Pro 2, you can assign one of the smart pads to do the same, they just call it back channel. On the Mixcast 4, the talkback channel was for some reason only heard by the physical headphone ports, whereas now it can also be sent to the USB channel, to the smartphone channel, as well as to the Bluetooth channel, which you can select individually. So if you go into the channel settings, you can toggle if you want the talkback channel to be heard by whoever may be connected through those channels. This is nice, especially as you can freely toggle it also during the recording in case you feel the need to talk to the participants before the next segment. Trouble is that you cannot exclude the headphone ports from it, so why you can select if you want to talk secretly to the people on the USB channel, on the smartphone channel, or on the Bluetooth channel, the people present with you will hear the talk back in any case, which is rather disturbing. As a logical next step, a future update should allow us to also select which headphone port should transmit the talkback channel, just like on the Rodecaster Pro 2. So I think we can all agree that these were already really useful additions, but I've saved the real big guns last. And these are related to the sound pads. First, previously you could not set individual volumes for the sounds loaded to the sound pads. They were as loud as the file you have dragged onto them. And your only chance to adjust them was the actual fader but it was hard to remember which pad was quieter or louder and quickly readjust the fader because it kind of defeated the purpose of having quick access to pads when you had to mess with the fader at the same time too. Playback sound volume can now be adjusted separately for each sound pad, plus the sounds assigned to sound pads can also be normalized for easier matching the levels, albeit I didn't see this function to have much of an effect on the volumes. The volume adjustment option also applies to what was the biggest headache for many, the bleep sound, which was annoyingly loud compared to the other pads. Great stuff, and best of all, you can do all this while recording. So if you find out in the middle of the recording that the sound pad is too loud, you can simply adjust it on the fly without having to stop recording, and this is really sweet. But still, this is not the most important change with the sound pad. Tascam has introduced an ingenious invention with the Mixcast 4 for sound pads, which was displaying the sound pad names on the screen. Such a simple solution, yet no one else did it before them. And it made using sound pads so much easier that you didn't have to remember which one was which or use a cutout or masking tape to handwrite and stick below each pad to indicate somehow visually which sound it will play. Also, having eight sound pad bangs, it would have been quite inconvenient and counter-effective. So it was all fine and dandy, but the huge problem and my biggest criticism towards how soundpad banks worked on the Mixcast 4 was that once you hit record, you couldn't change soundpad banks. The small arrows on the screen that allowed changing the pads have disappeared 
and you were stuck on whatever bank you had active when you pressed record, which has kind of defeated the purpose of having soundpad banks, as you really only had 8 soundpads at your disposal for a recording at the time. Now they can be changed during recording, and sounds that are playing will now continue playing even while banks are changed. At last. Before we jump to conclusions, let me know in the comments if you liked this video so far and also subscribe for more of this kind of content. Let's just not generously slip over the fact that there were 5 firmware updates during the first year of the Mixcast Force lifecycle, as being committed to updating a device is not a common pattern at all, if you look at the companies in this industry, except from Rode themselves, who are also actively keeping their flagship products fresh and desirable. With these 10 new features that are included in the firmware updates, currently bringing the Mixcast 4 to firmware 1.3.0, the Tascam Mixcast 4 became a truly mature product, one that is on par and even other classes the original Rodecaster Pro, the first version, and sits right between the Rodecaster Pro 1 and 2 in terms of its capabilities and price. Kind of bad luck for Tascam that the price of the original Rodecaster Pro started to drop quickly even below $400 used. Tough competition, as it is still a great podcasting console, even if the Mixcast 4 is in many ways a better choice. Now we need a podcasting console to fill the gap between the Zoom Podtrack P4 and the original Rodecaster Pro, with a smaller size, maybe less channels, but with the advanced routing and voice processing. Who do you think will bring out such a device first? Rode, Zoom, Tascam, Focusrite, Personas or someone else? Let me know in the comments. The freshly announced Connex 6 interface from Lewitt is definitely a step in the right direction, but unfortunately the remote guest recording capabilities are nowhere near to where I could actually recommend it for podcasters. Focusrite on the other hand got pretty close with the Vocaster series, but it is also not quite there yet. See my review about it. I hope you enjoyed this video and bye for now.